Chancellor. It is now my pleasure to invite Mr. Al Crichton to read the citation for the honorary Mr. Dave Martin, who would be recognized and acknowledged at this historic ceremony to be awarded an honorary doctorate of letters by the University of Ghana. Chancellor, it is my great pleasure that I invite Mr. Alcrichton to read the citation. O oh, chestnut tree, great rooted blossomer, are you the leaf, the blossom, or the bowl? O oh, body swayed to music, O oh, brightening glance, how can we know the dancer from the dance? Chancellor, it is the timeless predisposition of artists to pose dilemmas. And we are not surprised that we have one before us now. I ask leave to appeal to you in your infinite wisdom to assist us with your esteemed opinion on this delicate issue. Here lies the matter. A man and a bunch of animals was arguing by the zoo. The man said to them, I am civilized. I am superior to you. But consider the case advanced by the Tom Cat, who is so often accused of a certain polygamous and unfaithful disposition. He argues, a man will have about 22 women. He looking for 23. And so, esteemed chancellor, I implore you to forego lengthy ruminations and just answer me flat. Who civilized and who's the Tom Cat? Having disposed of that, the next conundrum is the artist himself. In which language do we extol the brilliance of an artist whose brilliance is his use of language? Here is a writer whose prose pieces are in precise English, but whose poetic genius is articulated in Guyanese Creole. What is more, the Creole is a language that is not only his tool and resource, but his declared culture and identity. Me feel sure, say, it would have feel better if we did do this citation in a Creolese. You can't make out the man from the language, from the art. Oh, body swayed to music. Oh, brightening glance. How do we know the dancer from the dance? Chancellor, I present Dave Martins, singer, songwriter, musician, band leader, storyteller, stand-up comedian and playwright, newspaper columnist, former director of culture for the Cayman Islands, and nightclub operator in Toronto, Canada, who has also been an artist in residence at the University of Guyana. He has combined the extraordinary power of the imagination with a clinical sense of observation and a command of music and literature to produce songs and entertainment whose impact on the Caribbean has lasted for more than 50 years.
popular music is characteristically ephemeral, fashionable today, but gone tomorrow. Martin's output is popular music, yet his best known songs have never grown stale and his music from the 1960s, 1970s, 1980s are still known today. And Guyanese can sing them word for word. Among his greatest achievements is his impact across the Caribbean and in the diaspora in North America. Although much of this music was written and released in Canada, the songs and the name of the band, Dave Martin and the Trade Winds, became household words, and many of the compositions were hit songs. His interest in the Caribbean and its culture was sustained throughout his career and ensured that the songs appealed to West Indians and kept the music immortal. Take note though, Chancellor, that biographers often make much of the fact that none of these elevated achievements were even dreams in the mind of the youth. So was it with Martins, who learned to play the guitar, became a musician and a superstar quite unceremoniously. He was born and grew up in a Portuguese Guyanese family on the West Bank of Demerara and has recounted a full life of adventure as he had to cross the river to attend secondary school in Georgetown. As a very proud graduate of St. Stanislaus College, he worked at the Timeri Airport, which added further chapters to the rich experiences he frequently narrated, gifted storyteller as he is. It is relevant that he liked to read, as well as to indulge his keen interest in the culture of the people in the countryside. As his career developed, after moving to Canada, Martins performed in Toronto at the Bermuda Tavern and at his own club called We Place. But it is significant, Chancellor, that even the naming of that club reflects the depth of an interest in the Caribbean identity through the use of language, since we place is Creolese for our place, something that belongs to us. In the same vein is the choice of name for his band. The trade winds is meteorological. It is the name of a strong current that blows across the West Indies. What better name? for a band whose music was a constant force educating audiences from the 1960s to beyond the 1990s with themes from West Indian culture, satires on the behavior of a people as in its traditional or copycats, all fortified by extraordinary humor as in honeymooning couple or cricket in the jungle. I am tempted to name the whole long list of memorable melodies, but it will suffice, Chancellor, for me to invite you to join me in singing. We're not giving up no mountain. We're not giving up no sea. We're not giving up no river that belongs to we. Not one cuirass, not a blade of grass. Yeah. But no, 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 you need not stand the chancellor. No. This is only the unofficial second national anthem of the Republic of Guyana. No song ever written has captured the popular sentiment, the national spirit or the patriotism of a people more than that one that was written one day with a borrowed acoustics guitar in a room at the Pegasus Hotel. But Chancellor, I saw it go. Such has been the influential place and impact of the musical output of the trade winds on Guyana 
on the Caribbean and the diaspora in North America, that it was sustained for a period of 50 years. Such has been the lively, entertaining, and informed articles on Caribbean life and culture in the Starbrook News. So significant have been Martin's stage performances and comedy routine. So profound has been his contribution to Guyanese literature and language that this institution feels privileged to recognize him at the highest level. Chancellor, I present Dave Martins and request of you that you exercise the powers vested in you by the Council of the University of Guyana and confer upon him the degree of Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa. Chancellor, I do invite you to confer the degree as just outlined by the author. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is my profound pleasure on behalf of the Council of the University to bestow the honorary degree to Mr. Dave Martin, honorary doctorate of letters. Is it letters or literature? Yes. Huh? It is legends or literature? The big round of applause. The newest honorary doctorate for the University of Guyana and Chancellor, I invite you and the Vice Chancellor to appropriately robe Dr. David Martin. And on behalf of the Chancellor, members of the Council, the Vice Chancellor, senior management team, faculty and staff, and especially on your own behalf, the class of 2022 from the Faculty of Education and Humanities, we present, the Chancellor presents a token of your appreciation to. Dr. Dave Martin, please give a round of applause. Please be seated. Chancellor, it is my pleasure and with profound humility that I now invite Dr. Dave Martin to address us and to do the feature address at this 56th convocation exercise. Please welcome him appropriately. Thank you very much. I have a few Items written down here in pen and ink, so I wouldn't forget to say that. But before I, I, I do that, I want to say you have no idea the impact of this event today on a party by from home, from Hague, sorry. Born and grew up in Hague, West Coast and Brothers, read books for a while, and went away from Guyana and made a reputation for myself based on what Guyana had given me. 
So whatever honor comes to me, I have to thank God for it. I, I may have I may have embellished or perhaps even fabricated certain things in writing some of them songs. One morning couple, for example. That wasn't me. I don't know who that was, but that wasn't me. Um, if you ask me to pick one song from the list, I, I would have difficulty. Because what I was doing outside, you see, I was living in a country that had probably zero connection directly with Guyanese Gyan, culture. So there was a lot of, what do you mean by that, sir? Or what is a job, be boy? You know, those kinds of questions. So I want to thank the university um, for wading through all that stuff. There's a lot of stuff. We wade through all it and decide, yeah, this has merit, this has value, this is useful. Uh, the fellows who did that, the ladies who did that, thank you very much. I need to give some attention to the origin, but I should. But, you know, creative work is, is, is a mystery, at least to me it was. Where did these things come from? How much music was I listening to? Not a lot. Remember, in my day, when I was growing up in the West Coast, the music I was listening to was 78 RPM records. You all remember them? Keep it, you broke it. And from that mixture of, of music and, of course, experience and so on, when I started to write songs, there was a mountain of stuff I was drawing on. I was, I was, I didn't, I didn't go outside too much. I went outside probably for the Calypso rhythm from Trinidad. And I wrote a lot of that. But I was, I don't know what, what I was drawing on. I, it, it, it was just there. It was, it was like it was made in for me, you know what I mean? And so when the songs, the, the first song I did actually, on the morning couple, both of you on top, was, uh, was an instant hit. So it didn't take long. It can take, it can take years sometimes for a performer to hit. And in my case, I, it was great. And I was, I was spoiled by it, to tell you the truth. So that later on when uh, I would release a 45 or an LP and the stations wouldn't play it, I would, I would get an L. And by this time, I, of course, I, I, was, I was familiar enough with the folks at the radio station that I could talk to them frankly and say, what the hell did I go? Or I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> So we had a good, it was, it was a lot of fun for me. It was a lot of, really a lot of fun. To, to, I don't want to start calling names because it's a long list, but it goes back to, you know, Pancho Kuru and those, those people. Some of you may know what I'm talking about. Many of you don't. Believe me, they were here and they were producing. I was producing was, music they were producing projection and the two things worked well together and canada was the same way you know in canada it was even more because there were people in canada i was living in toronto but there was a people all across canada who would come from this one land and made a name for themselves sometimes not a public name but a name and that whole scenario 
of music and writing, and art and culture, propagating things, propping up a people, giving them a face in this new country that they were in. They had something of their own and said, why not, this is a meal. That has value beyond measure because it made them stand up with a straightening crow. I mean, imagine a country boy like growing up in West Coast and standing in Madison Square Garden singing a song. Amazing. Thank you. I want to say that this honor, this honorary doctorate is frankly speaking, I'm, I can talk about you all, you know, and BS in the Italian stream. Frankly, it, it, it is thousand. I mean, I, I can see the connection for the humor. I can see the connection for the use of the actual language because that's something I didn't I didn't stray from. I kept the language that I that some people would say is bad English. <laughs> he's a good guy and he's and I kept that in, I, and, and that sustained me. So I myself would listen to a song that I hadn't heard in playing once and I would hear something I didn't I hadn't heard before. And that is that is in a sense, that is a simple way of describing what art is. That is what art is. It takes you back to what you should be remembering. If you in chat in case you forget it, you're taken back to day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it in, include it. If you don't have somebody, the, the artist by himself doesn't have somebody doing that job yet. The artist himself is the one who is who is constantly checking and constantly evaluating and trying to remember. And if you forget, then you go and ask somebody older than you or who had more sense than you to remind you about it. So I had a lot of help along the way. I want to say also that musically, when you start out, at least in my experience, going back to, we're talking now about the early, very early 1960s, when you're going back and, and competing with that stuff that has been there so long for all them years, gaining a reputation as a, as a it's got to be good. If it ain't good, you could just chips and walk away. You know what chips is, I don't have to explain that. The, the one thing that, that, I, that I would say, if you ask me to give performers or creators or originators advice, um, that's a hard one because Everybody sees a different slice of bread coming off the loop, you know. We see different ones. So look for the one that catch you. Look for the one that make you stop and say, oh yeah, I never think about it before. That's for the artist. It is there, it is there for you, you know. What, what other people say about it, is, it doesn't matter. It, you, your work will succeed or it will not. And if it succeeds, then you're gonna, you're gonna explain nothing. You, know, you shouldn't have to explain nothing. At least I don't. You take it as a gift and a gift that was given to you. You didn't you ask nobody for it. It just came to you. And when, when it comes to you and you recognize it, and more importantly, when you present it, when you produce it, when you create it, and you see it meaning something to other people, well, let me tell you, that is, that is an acceleration I cannot explain. But it, it just, just make you walk, walk tall, 
to make you all stronger because it means that you you picked up the right stuff you didn't get fooled by the mind that there's fluff there gonna be fluff but you just ignore the fluff you know, look for the substantial you look for the bony the muscular and you go with that so you have to become your own best critic i think that's one of the things about this honorary doctorate thing is that we sometimes forget is that this selection that the person makes is in itself a gift because there's a lot of stuff that comes here and you have to be discerning enough to say as a guy now can easily say chips at the man who is done and show it away that's part of the work part of the work is selection and you know it's the other thing is that you can't fool folks if you try to slip one in every now and then that is not quite what it should be the audience tells you fast it does it quick hey boy was the to use the guy this garbage the honor of of of, of this work coming to me is is a, is a mystery i cannot tell you how well part of it is going up with 78 rpm records some things that we just put a needle remember that you put a needle in a machine and you put it on and you play over eight ten records and you take it out and change the needle tell people over that nobody to say what yeah change the needle you have to otherwise the quality of what you're trying to present is, is not going to be achieved so the artist is 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 is, is, in, is in, in that milieu that that mixture all the time all the time if you're an artist you can't escape it even if you want to take a break and write a piece of stupidness the muse doesn't let you do that the muse hey 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 what's they doing the body so to come here today and just sit and look at y'all esteem people how you dress up so sharp looking very pro professorial yourself it's nice thank you very much for it i appreciate it thank you We will by And to bring an end to this part of our conferral, I like to Vice Chancellor and Chancellor to present on your behalf a very special token from all of us to our feature speaker, Dr. Dave Martin. Thank you, be seated.